Wow. Well, probably going back to when I was a contracting officer and um, I was the uh, person responsible for negotiating a contract to get mobile subscriber equipment or MSE. Uh, it was the most ambitious Signal Corps project ever and uh, I was surrounded by a lot of wonderful, really smart people, mostly senior to me. I learned a lot from them, uh, but more importantly, we were able to put a capability into uh, the hands of our soldiers that was beyond uh, anything that existed before. Uh, this allowed them to finally operate in the battle space without having to worry about bringing large wires and trunks and waiting for the communications gear to uh, set up. Uh, they were able to contact people on the uh, battle space without um, even um, knowing where they were because they each had a distinct phone number. And it was sort of like um, the beginning of cell telephones, uh, but in the uh, battle space. And um, it was probably the most important thing uh, that I was ever involved in. I was very fortunate. Um, I started as an intern um, and um, I had a lot of interesting assignments because there were people that must have seen something in me that decided to mentor me early and um, I learned a lot from them and by being willing to take on challenges uh, beyond what my grade level was in order to expand my capabilities um, as a contracting person and that helped me, I think, become successful later on. Um, I think being willing to take on challenges is, is what it's really all about. Uh, there are a number of people who started working uh, for the Army around the same time as I did that, uh, quite frankly, uh, never even got into the first level of supervision uh, because they just took it as a job. I looked at it as a, as a career and in hindsight I could say it was an important career, one that perhaps the general public doesn't always understand, but we need to realize that uh, what we do is not buy weapon systems. What we do is we keep soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines safe, and that's because they have the best weapon systems. Well, I, I think that probably my fondest memory was uh, meeting my wife. Uh, I had a desk by a doorway, and in those uh, days before computers, there was a lot of paper that moved around the office, and she came through with uh, sort of a grocery cart loaded with uh, a lot of paper documents, and she banged into my desk, and um, I think I knew almost immediately that uh, she was the one. And a couple of years later, we were married, and now we've been married for 37 years. We have uh, two wonderful children. My, my son uh, works for the Corps of Engineers as a natural resource specialist. And uh, my daughter uh, manages a, a, a depot out in Washington State, and she's a lieutenant commander in the uh, Naval Reserve. And uh, we're very proud of them. Uh, but if she hadn't banged into my desk that day, I'm not sure what would have happened. I was working at the uh, Pentagon as the acting deputy assistant secretary of the Army for procurement when 9-11 hit. And, uh, we uh, realized very quickly that uh, not only were a number of our customers who we used to pass in the hall were now no longer with us, and how sad that was, but we had to go out and start to do the rebuilding of the Pentagon. Uh, I was fortunate, uh, my building was, uh, my part of the building was a few uh, levels away from the impact point, uh, but uh, part of the Army Procurement Office, which was actually in the basement, uh, was close enough to the impact point that it had done enough damage to the equipment that we had to get it all moved out. And we had to motivate the people to come back to work and uh, to do the jobs that were necessary at that time, which was important for our country. When we first found out that uh, we were going to be uh, closing Fort Monmouth and moving to Aberdeen Proving Ground, uh, obviously, there was a lot of angst amongst the existing workforce. And part of my job as the leader of an organization that was really, we're really at the pointy end of the spear. 
There's no programs, there's no R&D, there's no support services that happen unless we execute a contract to make it happen. And so I had to keep our people motivated. And uh, we discussed it and I said, well, we've got to get down to Aberdeen and we need to start recruiting. And we went out to all of the uh, local colleges and universities um, and we also talked to people who had, um, were alumni from other places and we said, hey, we want to bring great people into this organization. And we recruited over 400 brand new interns into Aberdeen, which in itself was a challenge. Then I was able to find some people at Fort Monmouth who were willing to make the trip down here uh, to be, fill leadership positions. And then I found some others who were going to retire but were willing to come down and help train these people. And by hiring some really smart, supercharged individuals and bringing people down that cared, uh, we were able to keep uh, the organization afloat, keep the contracting moving, and uh, continue to build on our reputation, which was an excellent one as far as taking care of our soldiers.